Hi, I'm Pat Dunn, and this is my blog. So, over the last week, I've started a new job, and I am uh, pretty happy about that. It's, uh, it's good to be working in a company with a lot of interesting challenges and cool coworkers, neat location. Um, it's going pretty well. I, I, it's taking a little bit of uh, getting used to to make sure that I wake, uh, go to sleep the right time in the evening to wake up to make it to work in the morning, but uh, that's definitely worth, uh, worth the hassle. And it's, it means that I'm finally comfortable spending money again. I'll be insured again soon. And I can get the medications I need for my migraines. Uh, well, I mean, they don't fix the migraines, but they get rid of at least the mild to moderate ones. Well, most of them, anyhow. The bad ones, I'll just have to deal with. Uh, none of us has a perfect body. We all have physical and other faults, such as life. Um, but, oh, am I getting a little bit of the darkness of the camera? Let's see. Yeah, catching the back of that monitor there. Anyhow, um... Last week has been pretty interesting. So, last Monday was Memorial Day. I didn't do a lot uh, except get ready to uh, go to work. Hung out at a coffee shop, chatted with friends. Um, uh, on Tuesday, that was my first day. Uh, I had a nice, kind of exhausting uh, first day at work, uh, and then went to uh, a sci-fi universe lecture at the American Museum of Natural History which was quite cool. And I guess it's interesting. One, one of the common problems that, that happens in the computer industry and in other industries in general is that uh, one has the reasonable uh, unhappiness that, that a lot of women have that the fields aren't open to them. And while I think that's true, I, I actually, I, it's a valid complaint. I mean, not necessarily open in the sense of being legally formally closed, but rather they face certain discrimination, not being taken seriously, like, what are you doing here? Do you really belong? Things like that, that make it hard for them to easily fit into uh, uh, many workplaces. You end up having all male workplaces. Uh, you end up having uh, workplaces where you get frequent uh, jokes that are demeaning to women, th uh, things like that, which, I mean, I think jokes are generally fine, but one should be comfortable with, with them pointing all directions, and when they only point in one direction, it's not cool. Uh, but yeah, you, you get those kind of atmospheres, and they end up being pretty off-putting. But one of the things that I encountered, be uh, because I've worked mainly in academia, or at least that's been the, the bulk of my career, um, is that generally you have a pretty decent gender mix, and as far as I can tell, not, uh, and as far as I've heard, not nearly as, as many problems along those lines as out, uh, outside the ivory tower. And actually, yeah, some, some people once thought it was, uh, some people suggested I avoid the term ivory tower because it's usually seen as, in, as a negative term. I see it as a positive term, and I would rather rescue the term than avoid using it because some people see it as negative. I think that Generally, things in universities are a model for how things should be in broader society. Um, you end up having intelligent people uh, devoting their life to knowledge. And, um, and they, they get things done. Uh, and they, they usually do so in a much more data-driven way than people outside of industry do. They usually rub shoulders a lot more with uh, with newer, fresher minds in the field. Ideas move much more rapidly throughout a university, and they get proven wrong. Uh, and, uh, and so you end up discarding the bad ideas. You home much more rapidly onto the truth in the university than you do out in an uh, industry. So the ivory towers are wonderful because on top of an ivory tower, you can see a lot further than you can from atop a skyscraper. Yeah, well, metaphors are getting a little bit weird here, but it, it's true. Uh, universities, I think they're the, the best place. They have among the best people. Uh, even the guests there are enjoying the best times in their life. Um, they get to get access to the most, uh, the most ideas, the best ideas, the freshest knowledge. Uh, knowledge. And, uh, and so the yeah, ivory towers are great. Um, anyhow, it does take some time for, 
I mean, the, the, the things that we need to fix in our society relating to oppressive gender roles for both males and females, they're going to take some time to, to be fixed. It's not going, uh, it, the general shifts here are generational. And some criticism from feminists or anti-racists or other camps are decent, some aren't. Um, but there are a lot of things that need to be changed in society. And it's important that we at least be open to listening to the arguments that are being made. You can laugh at the bad ones. You can cut down the bad ones, undermine them, do what you need. But remember that there are good arguments and there are good changes that some people are proposing. And I would suggest try to find the, the right places to, to cleave reality so that we end up with the good changes that come from activism without the bad changes. We don't want to change our rules of discourse so that somebody saying fuck you is seen as making a decent argument. We don't want to undermine good, honest debate. Uh, we don't want to mark opinions that might offend people as being a problem. But we also don't want to discard the possibility that there are really big changes that need to happen in society. And so, yeah, we, we need to select the good ones and uh, amplify the good voices and criticize the bad. And people won't always agree on what the good and the bad are, which is why we want to have a healthy tradition of discourse. And, see, and we have to hope that generally people will be convinced by the decent arguments in the long run. Anyhow. Uh, so it would, uh, oh yeah, yeah, the, getting back to the, the reason that I brought this up is that AMNH, just like any, uh, other university, and at this point AMNH has, uh, really should be classified as being at least partly university. They're accredited to grant degrees. They have a good grad program. Um, they have a lot of lecturers who are women. And of course, a lot of lecturers who are men. They have lecturers who are not whites. They have a good variety. In, in who lectures, in who teaches, and that's fantastic. It helps, uh, if we're going to promote the values of science in society and hope for the big cultural changes that we need to make a much more data-driven and thoughtful society, having, uh, having good role models of various, uh, various races and of both genders, it's a healthy thing. So I, I, I celebrate that. I, I, but the thing is, because I spent so much time in the university, I don't even notice it most of the time. Uh, I mean, it's not that I'm incapable of noticing that uh, I'm at a lecture and the person lecturing is female. But rather, most of the time, I just don't see it as being remarkable. Because I have been to so many lectures in my life. I've had bosses in my life uh, who have been female that I just forget that these experiences are a little bit unusual outside of academic uh, institutions. But um, yeah, progress is slow but sure in these directions and it helps, it, we can push it along, make it a little bit more rapid and deal, do a little bit less systemic uh, injustice as a society. Uh, no, I mean, I'm not claiming that everybody who takes part in this society is, is part of the uh, part of the problem but rather everybody who's in the society should be seen as having some level of obligation to keep an eye out for those who are part of the problem and find a way to minimize their influence or to push against them and often that just might mean like if, if somebody has sexist or racist views you want to make sure that they're not doing any hiring and that ideally the way that they talk to other people isn't going to be unfair. And, and I realize, like, when I say unfair, it's, it's a very vague term here. But, uh, but making sure that they don't commit any systemic, uh, or not systemic, that they don't commit any concrete injustice. We, we all should be looking out for that, for each other. And, and not really for each other in the sense of we're trying to be allies, but rather because we believe in a society that helps people uh, do well when they're aiming for their potential. Because we believe these things, we're pushing our own beliefs for society, for what we want in society. When, when, we, uh, when we make these arguments, and sure, we, we will sometimes be wrong. Sometimes our arguments will be silly. Sometimes our goals will be 
unacceptable or incompatible with other notions of societal decency. But provided we're willing to listen to arguments and and judge those arguments and maybe uh, maybe change our behavior if and when we were convinced that it's a problem, then we'll be doing basically as well as anybody could be expected to do uh, in a world of missing or uh, uh, under underdetermined information. I mean, okay, that's a terrible phrasing. Uh, information that underdetermines the theories that we would like to be using to improve society by our notion of improve. Anyhow, uh, next day um, after work, I went to a, uh, I wanted to go to a Genspace event, but I, uh, I didn't finish up with work until a little bit later than I expected, so uh, I was going to be very late by the time I showed up. So instead, I went to a City Bike data sh uh, showcase. City Bike is a program in New York City that lets people rent bikes uh, all over the city. And you'll see these like big blue bikes hooked into electronic racks. Somebody uses a credit card, they unlock the bike. Then when they're done with it, they park it in another uh, city bike uh, station. And it might not be the same one. A lot of people use this to commute to work. And, uh, and to a certain extent, the city bike trucks will go and pick up a whole bunch of bikes and then remove them uh, to uh, other, uh, other city bike locations so that you might have multiple waves of people uh, biking into work. And they'll all hopefully be able to get a bike both ways. Yeah, it's, it's a neat program. I haven't used it yet, um, but the uh, city bike, uh, I mean, it, alongside the city and all the different organizations that take part in managing this thing, they have a lot of data, a lot of really interesting data on where people pick up bikes, what routes they probably take. Um, they don't actually know because there aren't trackers on most of the bikes, um, but they do have ways apparently of finding bikes that people just take and don't bring back. Um, but they, they have a lot of data on, uh, on that, some of which is inferred, some of which they know about where the bikes go and how many people have been using the program. Uh, potentially for people who sign up for uh, subscriptions to the service, what the gender mixes are and where they tend to ride. And it's interesting to see presentations on uh, some, uh, some of that data. So I, I went, I enjoyed the presentation. Um, and it was neat. Um, on Thursday, oh, I hung out with, uh, with a friend after work, uh, went to uh, Union Square, and then, uh, uh, I don't know, went to, where did we go? Did we? Oh yeah, we, we met near my workplace, uh, grabs, uh, uh, a meal. Oh yeah, we, we, we took the subway down to Union Square, grabbed a meal, and uh, then walked around for a while and eventually ended up at, uh, at Yaka Cafe, which is a pretty cool 24-hour uh, cafe um, in the uh, East Village. Hung out there for a little bit, and uh, yeah, it was just a fun day of hanging out with someone. On Friday, uh, I think I... Um, after work, I went to uh, Tea Lounge and just hung out there for the rest of the evening. On Saturday, I, I started the day with a member walk in Central Park, which was really pretty cool. Uh, the member walk, m and h occasionally holds events where you, uh, where some uni uh, or some uh, museum staff, uh, they'll they'll uh, leave the uh, the museum with a bunch of people who have signed up and walk around someplace outside the museum, generally sh uh, on uh, talking about science topics and illustrating them. This was with, uh, with somebody I saw before in the museum who is who runs the facility in the basement that has um, uh, specimen samples. Uh, and uh, she does uh, uh, cryogenic suspension of those samples and uh, we'll send out samples to other academic institutions as needed um, for people to do genetic, uh, to do genetic, uh, to get genetic samples. Pretty cool. Uh, so I saw her before there, and this time she, she occasionally just takes walks in the park for lunch. So we met up uh, at, the, at the museum and took a two-hour walk um, uh, out in Central Park. 
and we saw all sorts of neat specimens. There were turtles. Um, uh, there, uh, I mean, I, I detailed this a little bit more on a Google Plus post, but it, it was just a really pleasant experience. I'm hoping that it wasn't too bad for her. Oh, and so near the end of that, uh, actually, there was a Shakespeare garden. And I didn't know this uh, about the Shakespeare garden before, but the this Shakespeare garden, it's a, it's a biological collection of every plant that's mentioned anywhere in a Shakespeare play. And so you end up having all these really interesting bushes and trees and stuff planted around there that obviously are mostly native to uh, the UK. Um, and it's it's just uh, it's a neat place to be. Uh, that's where the tour ended, um, and uh, yeah, it was was a neat neat event. Really beautiful day. Um, after that after that, I went to AM and H for a little bit and wandered around and saw a butterfly exhibit, or I mean, saw the butterfly exhibit, and then just wandered around the museum a little bit more. Uh, I took care of renewing my membership. Uh, while I was there, and uh, I think I went home and uh, and did laundry. That's super exciting. And today I uh, went to a coffee shop for a while and did uh, did a little bit of the Google Plus posting that I'd me been meaning to do uh, for a bit. Uh, and I still have a whole lot of things in my backlog just because work has often made me a little bit too tired to post as much as I would like to. Hopefully I'll get more regular about it. I just need to get used to the different sleep schedule. And, uh, and oh, so uh, uh, this evening, uh, after after the coffee shop, I went to an event held by a surrealist, uh, surrealist um, uh, meetup group, and we watched a bunch of really short, weird films. Some of them were terrible, and some of them were pretty decent. Like, there was this artist, uh, let me pull up her name. Uh, uh, she was a really weird and, I, I think, bad artist. Uh, Peggy Awesh. Yeah, it was just really crappy. Uh, good lord. Uh, like, there was something that was kind of like a porn film without the charm. Uh, I mean, without even an army charm. Uh, it was just... Awful, really awful. I, yeah, the tail you notice is one of my cats just had to hop on my lap here. Um, but yeah, I, I suffered through that, but most of the other films were actually pretty good. And, uh, oh yeah, 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 one other thing I forgot. Um, I, I'm, uh, yesterday, between, um, between, uh, between the, uh, or after the member walk, uh, and after AM and H, I went and saw um, Maleficent, which was, it's a Disney film. And I was a little bit worried because Disney often hasn't done a great job at producing films that are decent and interesting, and often they're, they're pretty horrible. Um, but Maleficent was actually a rather good film, and uh, it was kind of a gamble. It was a little bit weird to be inside a movie theater and to need to wait through all of the endless advertisements before the film actually started. I found that a little bit frustrating. But finally, uh, after uh, I mean, I basically just closed my eyes and nodded off a little bit during the uh, during the adverts. I just really, really hate advertisements, and so I use lots of ad blockers on on any browser I use. Generally, try and skip through them at other times, but eventually, it got to uh, got to the film, and it was really well done. Uh, it feels like finally. Uh, Maybe movies are, are moving beyond the Hays Code in the fullest extent. We we actually, we no longer are content to just call somebody evil in, in a piece of media and be satisfied with that. We're no longer really content with, uh, with narratives that have that kind of childlike morality of mark people as good or evil, and that's all there is to it. And... Uh, and yeah, this, this film didn't disappoint. It was really very interesting. And even even the, the characters who came closest to being seen as bad guys, they, they weren't really necessarily evil in, in any of the, the old sense that, that a lot of older media had. It doesn't mean that, that they were acceptable or likable or that you could live with them or anything like that, but you could at least imagine uh, where where they were coming from.
and you could fill in a lot of the details. You could see how people might behave that way. And um, uh, nonetheless, there were some pretty monstrous things depicted from people who weren't necessarily clearly evil in any full, unexplained sense. Um, but yeah, it, it was a really good film. Uh, I mean, I, I've read some some reviews afterwards that didn't like it as much as I did. They pointed out rightly so that the character of Malis Mal uh, Maleficent was really the only character who was explained fully, which I guess it, it's true. Uh, none of the other characters really had as much dimensionality, but at the same time, the film was really entirely about her. It wasn't meant to be about an event. It wasn't meant to be about a bunch of different people. It focused with great intensity on her and her development. She definitely developed as a character. Um, I mean, I, I guess there's a certain extent uh, it got some positive press from... Uh, from uh, feminist uh, uh, feminist theorists, and more or less, I mean, some of the same positive press that you see from Once Upon a Time, another series that I like. It passed the Bechdel test pretty well, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I don't actually have any problem with the Bechdel test. I think it's good that we're moving beyond treating women as being one dimensional. It doesn't mean that every Every feminist theory, particularly third wave feminist theories, it doesn't mean that they're right. But there are a lot of feminist theories that are right. There are a lot of feminist goals that are right. And um, changing the way that we treat the depiction of, of women in, uh, in media, it's a good thing. It's good to treat them as being as worthy of attention in film and as worthy of leading roles, as worthy of diverse goals and characterizations. Uh, if if you read uh, if you read about the Bechdel test and really go back and look at a lot of older media, you find that a lot of the time they really weren't treated seriously as characters. They rarely interacted with other females. They rarely uh, talked about things other than the relationships with men or or maintaining households, and that's a problem. And it's Good to see it being uh, addressed. Uh, anyhow, yeah, I, I'm going to probably be going through my thoughts on Maleficence a little uh, with, in a little bit more detail on Google+. Um, I'm thinking about doing a bit-by-bit -bit analysis of the moral choices that a lot of the characters make in the film and my thoughts on them. Um, ordinarily, this might seem kind of uninteresting, but my views on, on certain things uh, have occasionally been rather controversial. And I think that oftentimes working through real, uh, well, I mean, not real examples, but working through stories, looking for ways to talk about uh, the differences and the theories that we build, I think it's worthwhile. And it certain, it can turn what, what in other circumstances would be a very dry discussion of political theory or moral theory, value theory, into something that, because we have great examples that we've hooked up, uh, hooked into it, um, uh, suddenly they, they feel more alive. They, you can see how the theories would work. You can discuss theoreticals by having a great theoretical uh, visible to you. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be good. Um, yeah, I actually had a migraine for most of, of today. Fortunately, it mostly went away by the time I went to uh, by the time I made it to that uh, avant-garde um, surrealist uh, uh, film meetup. Um, so I'm trying to remember if I had anything more to talk about. Uh, I So I think uh, when I was doing this last time, I was trying to beat the last boss in Wolfenstein. I didn't really make any progress on that. Uh, I gave up for a little bit and played through Double May Cry, which was a lot of fun. Now I'm starting on uh, Kingdoms of uh, Amalur, uh, which feels a lot like um, Skyrim. Maybe it, uh, the graphics aren't nearly as good. It feels maybe a little bit like past generation-y, uh, like maybe half a generation back when it, terms, uh, when it comes to layout and plot and all that. 
but it's a lot of fun. It's well done. You, you, you can play your character uh, several different ways. I feel like it actually might have been maybe inspired by Skyrim uh, or by Skyrim, or maybe its uh, predecessor, uh, Oblivion. I'm off to look into that at some point. But yeah, it's a good game. I'm enjoying it. Um, I guess next next week is probably going to be a lot of training at work. Uh, should be interesting, and eventually I'm going to reach the point where uh, where I'm going to uh, where I'm going to be taking responsibility for things at work. But I still have a lot more training to do first. Um, anyhow, uh, I guess that's all for now. I'll see you in the next uh, vlog, um, and uh, maybe on Google Plus. Hopefully. Uh, take care.